And good morning. This is Kelsey from Kels Reads Things at Anna Porter Public Library in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And today on this Thursday morning, I am ready to discuss with you the magic fish. This is a young adult slash adult um, graphic novel, and the author is Trung Li Nujian. I probably butchered that and I apologize. <laughs> the Magic Fish is about a young man. He is not even really a man. He's really more of a boy. He's in middle school in this book. He's a second generation um, young man. His parents are Vietnamese and he and his mother like to read fairy tales to each other aloud to help her improve on her English and to also allow them to have something to connect them together and to just spend time with each other after school. The fairy tales they read often compare with Helen, who is Tien's, I think I forgot to mention his name, Tien's mother's name, rem compare with her own experiences from 10 years prior when she fled with her husband from uh, post-war Vietnam and they relocated to the United States. These stories help them bridge a gap not only between language but also time, culture, and it helps Tian realize that no matter what, his family will always love and accept him for exactly who he is. And that's one other thing I think I should mention. This is an LGBTQ-focused graphic novel, which basically just means there are themes of people who are who identify as LGBTQ, any of those acronyms, and uh, it's very present and it's very prominent in, in this book. In fact, that's kind of part of the whole purpose is acceptance, family love, and um, learning to be comfortable in your own skin. And not only for Helen, but especially for Tian. Now before I dive into the things that I really loved and want to highlight about this book, I think it's important to just let you know that I don't think there are necessarily any triggers in this book, with the exception of um, there is homophobia present. It's a part of one of the trials that Tian goes through um, is acceptance. He's afraid since his school doesn't seem to accept him. He goes to a religious school. Um, then his parents won't either. So um, that's probably really the only necessarily trigger that I can think of that readers might want to be aware of before they pick up this graphic novel. Okay, so The Magic Fish, I absolutely loved it. It was a beautiful, wholesome, heartwarming tale about Tien and his mother and about him facing prejudice, homophobia, the fear of his family not accepting him due to his sexuality. And just overall, I loved that the fairy tales that were present often reflected um, mirrored almost their own experiences and what they were going through, whether it was Tien's or Helen's, it was just very beautiful. There was, in my opinion, proper representation of the LGBTQ community. Um, I loved that the fairy tales that they read aloud helped connect Tien with his mother and allowed them ha to have a safe place to communicate. The illustrations were breathtaking taking. They were absolutely beautiful. And different color schemes, different color blocks were throughout, and they helped capture various feelings for what was taking place. And this is very common in graphic novels, and it's actually something I learned about in graduate school when I was going to library school, slash information sciences school, I suppose is the um, proper Thing to call it. I was taking a class about children's literature, especially in terms of illustrations and what certain themes, colors, shapes, all those things, what they communicate to the reader. And because of that, it helped me really pinpoint some things about this book. When Tien is in present time, and he when also when he's generally um, 
happy or he's connecting with his parents or his friends, it's usually in this soft pink color. To me, that indicates comfort, familiarity, and motherly love. Pink has been often used, I think, just in all kinds of art and expression as a form of just indicating softness and and love and it also allowed me to recognize what was taking place in current time because the book did switch back and forth between what was occurring in Tian and Helen's life and also what was occurring in the fairy tales. When the pages were primarily purple that indicated to me that it was the fairy tale and I think what the um what the author slash illustrator was trying to communicate to the audience here is that there is whimsy, magic, hope, and acceptance um, in those panels. And that really showed through. It helped because there that really is a major theme is Tien and his mother's uh, connection and acceptance of each other. And I think just the purple in the fairy tales just helps bring that forward, helps communicate that to the audience. There were also flashbacks to Helen and her husband's um, experience as they were trying to vacate uh, Vietnam, and those plan panels were usually relatively gold or brown in color. And I think the purpose of that was to help the reader understand um, that there are a lot of strong, convoluted um, feelings, emotions, and thoughts in those scenes. And those scenes took place about 10 years prior to the present story. And I know I mentioned earlier that the fairy tales really reflected on what was occurring in Tien and his mother's own life. But just to give an example, there was a Cinderella-esque retelling that was that had a Viet Vietnamese theme to it and there was an instance when while she is dancing with the prince and her evil stepmother and evil stepsister see and they're like whispering about it and then in real time Tien is attending a school dance he's dancing with one of his best guy friends a teacher notices and or a chaperone notices and whispers about it to his homophobic prejudiced teacher so I'm not going to give too much away. I have mentioned that he faces prejudice and homophobia in this book. So I feel like that's just a central theme. So it's not really giving anything away. Another thing about the fairy tales is I really enjoyed them in the book. There was Cinderella, um, The Little Mermaid, and they all had Vietnamese reimaginings, themes, colors, costumes, drawing styles. In fact, my absolute favorite was The Little Mermaid. Growing up, that was one of my absolute favorite Disney movies. Alongside Beauty and the Beast, of course, because who wouldn't want that massive library, right? Just the illustration. They're just gorgeous. Absolutely. Just beautifully imagined. Beautifully constructed. Just absolutely breathtaking. And I learned that a lot of fairy tales that we think of as more European classic are actually very common in different cultures of the world. There are all kinds of cultures that have a Cinderella story, a Little Mermaid-ish story. So that was really interesting to learn about. And it's something that you kind of already know, but for it to be mentioned by the author in the back, I think just gives it a little more, um, it impresses me, definitely, that they included that information just for the readers to know. I loved the fact um, that Helen's struggle was really highlighted. She was caught between two worlds, two cultures, uh, the culture back home in uh, Vietnam as well as the culture in her present day in, U in the U.S. and trying to just find her place in between these two worlds. And it was beautiful because a lot of the fairy tales had similar themes with characters facing similar um, trials and experiences. And by the end, it was just a wholesome, beautiful tale about a mother and her child and how they love each other, they accept each other, and how they connect through stories. And this just further 
uh, pushed my beliefs that stories are one of the strongest tools that we have to bridge gaps, to offer communication and acceptance and understanding. And that was why I gave The Magic Fish a five star rating. And not only did I love the themes and the purpose of the book, but in general, the illustrations were breathtaking. The colors used to indicate different feelings, to indicate what was occurring in what time, whether it be uh, present, past, or um, you know, potentially the stories that were being told. Just everything about this book, I personally think, was very well done, very well thought out, and it was a beautiful love note to the LGBTQ community. I guess that's all I really wanted to say about this beautiful, wonderful graphic novel, and I highly suggest that you read it today. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say today about The Magic Fish. Again, I loved it. It was definitely a favorite read so far of 2021. Now, either tomorrow or in a little more than a week, I will be reviewing with you a Vow So Bold and Deadly. I will be taking next week off for vacation, so I may not be able to do a book review that quickly by tomorrow, but I'll do my best, and if you don't see me tomorrow, then I will see you in a approximately a little more than a week. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support and I appreciate just all the recommendations and anytime you reach out to me, please feel free uh, to reach out to me to, I don't know, recommend a book to me. Tell me something that you liked about our reviews. Just anything that you can think of, that's what we're here for. Librarians are here to listen and to help. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful Thursday.